One of the reasons we really want to have you on is that you, you do stand out in the world of wrestling as a guy who will do anything. You will risk your body. That's you true. will hurt yourself. I mean, really hurt yourself. You have, you've lost an ear wrestling, is that true? I lost uh, two-thirds of an ear, I guess you'd oh, say. Oh, well, that's okay, then. Yeah, it's not quite as bad. Yeah. You lost, I mean, what happened? I mean, uh, Well, I was in uh, Munich, Germany, and I was doing a move, and I ended up getting my neck caught in the ropes, which are actually uh, steel cables coated by rubber. And uh, although my opponent later claims he saved my life by pulling me out of there, a fan's videotape showed that he actually had his back turned towards me. It was... Uh, yelling at the fans, and I, I likened it kind of like the wolf that chews off its paw. You know, I literally, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say I thought I was going to die in there. It was so tight on my, the ropes were so tight on my neck. Right. So when I pulled out, now the ear didn't just come off. It ended up that I got back in, and uh, there was quite a bit of blood coming down. Oh, I man. could hear the little pitter-patters of blood on the blue mat. And, uh, a little pitter-patter? <laughs> yeah, a little pitter-patter. You tell it so nice, sound. this yeah. story. Yeah. When I, um, <laughs> And, uh, well, yeah, when the, when Vader uh, threw a punch, I blocked it, and right. uh, I threw my own punch, and there you see something oh, obviously man. fall off the side of my head. Uh, That's got to be disconcerting to see a part of yourself. Like, what's that? Oh, right. Well, well the truth was... That's me. <laughs> yeah. It's a strange series of events, because we'd actually had two referees who were flown home with injuries. Right. So we had a French referee who, who was not able to tell me that, hey, I've got your ear here. So he picked it up, he handed it to the ring announcer, and while the match was still going on, the ring announcer kind of tiptoed it to the back where when I finished it was waiting for me in a bag of ice. That's nice. They yeah. put it on ice for you. They That's are great. very considerate people over there in how Germany. Many, how many stitches have you had in your whole uh, career? Well, you know what? I'd probably had about 50 behind that ear beforehand, so right. there went 50 right away. I've probably had about, uh, you know, over 300. But uh, I, I so probably... I could hit you right now. You just fall apart. No, no, no. I'm actually pretty good at taking punishment. That's kind of my calling card. Right. And there's kind of like a matter of personal pride where you don't actually go to the emergency room unless you really need it. That's so for wimps. Say, the emergency yeah, room. Yeah, you know, that's I what get, I say. It was getting to the point where the, the uh, doctors knew me on a first name basis there. And, uh, <laughs> you again. So yeah. they, they, you know, you learn to kind of patch yourself up with a little bit of crazy glue or uh, or. Uh, or tape. So I've, I've had I've had quite a few injuries there. Well, I want to let's prove this to people because there are a lot of people that don't know this. About a year and a half ago, you had what many people believe to be the greatest match of all time. It was you versus the Undertaker, right? And it clearly went beyond the bounds of anything people had seen in wrestling before. Let's take a look at this clip right here and show people what happened. You're, You're on top there. of a cage, and the yeah, that's about 16 feet down to the now ground. Now that's that's. The now that, okay. It was and you know what? We weren't showing the same fall over and over again. <laughs> that was three times. It's no reason to concern because that was fake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's the thing is you look at that and you're like, there's no way that no. you could fake falling. How many feet was that? That was a legitimate 16 feet. 16 yeah. foot fall onto a table. And you didn't stop there. They started to take you out in a stretcher, and Start you got up. I just felt like it was a pay-per-view. The fans paid $30. I felt like maybe I'd given them about $20 worth. They needed, they needed more, Conan. So they wanted look, more. Let's so show I, what, what you did so after, they, after you woke up from that there fall. There it is. Look, I'm hot now. This adrenaline. is the same night, right? Yeah, adrenaline's going through my body. I climb up the cage. Right. That's exactly and, uh, what I would do. Uh, actually, there are... Uh, <laughs> The chair that followed me down was actually knocked out a couple of my teeth. Now here comes the uh, thumbtacks, which I had made famous over in Japan. Boom! There we go. See that thing in my nose? Now wait a minute. Let's 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 Thank undo. You. Those are oh, a couple of things. First of all, those are like those were real tacks. That's not. I mean, you know, I wasn't able to find uh, what some fans think. Uh, actually exists, which is like a fake thumbtack store where you buy your <laughs> fake chairs, you know. Yeah, they, it, it was a real deal. There was about 6,000 of them, and I'd say uh, about five or 600 ended up in my body. Really? Yeah. So probably. after, and also, you went in the fall, when you fell through the through the cage, yes. that was not supposed to happen. Yeah, the cage. And you fell uh, and you lost a tooth. The cage uh, pulled an ad lib on me, and uh, and we went through. Yeah, and it, if you could see it, I don't know if you could see it. A lot of a lot of fans watch this tape over and over and over, and I firmly believe that they don't have girlfriends. Anyone who's seen that uh, <laughs> match more than three or four times probably. Well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he knows what I'm talking about. I like how. He, he I love, you know what I, doesn't date a whole lot, Tony. You know what I love is, you said those guys don't have girlfriends, and one guy went, yeah! <laughs>
not the reaction I had in high school when I didn't have a girlfriend. Now, you, you lost a tooth, and the tooth went in your nose. Right, right. We have a picture of this. It's not for the squeamish. Can we see this, please? There it is. Now look, you see that? It looks like I'm smiling. They thought I was smiling. Look at this man, guy. Right. Smiling. What I was trying to do, I was trying to push my tongue through the hole underneath my lip. Okay. Because I had about a... <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm going to be going above and beyond that $30 limit. I'm really going to, you know, I'm going to give them something they can remember. But it's been talked about, I mean, uh, out of That's all a famous that, match. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll never, you know, that's like what Chappaquiddick is to Ted Kennedy, Hell in the Cell is to me, you know. <laughs> Son. What a wonderful thing to say. <laughs> uh, the, uh, before we go, because we're running very tight on Ooh. time here, yeah. quickly, you're famous for, you use a smelly sweat sock called Socko to yeah. disable your opponents. And, and we only have a second, but uh, there's Sokka. I have okay. Mr. Sokka. What and I do, I apply a, a nerve hold, uh, which is made doubly effective with the use of a smelly sweat sock, and I go underneath the tongue. Right. There's a hold that Dr. Sam Shepard of the Fugitive fame, the right. doctor who... Uh, Another the, great reference. <laughs> the, the Fugitive show Happy. based on. Yeah. yeah, you go underneath the tongue, and the fans at home, it's the only move that you can actually try on yourselves. So around the country, you might want to open up, go underneath the tongue, and press down on the two nerves while simultaneously, big word for a wrestler, pressing up on the uh, little bone that goes underneath the jaw. And you can actually paralyze people by doing it. Sure, it's a paralyzing pain they can't And the, swell the smelly uh, sweat sock is just to humiliate them while you're doing it? It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, before we go, we're just about out of time, but um, I know you're a sports fan. Uh, people are curious who you're rooting for in the World Series. Well, I grew up in uh, Long Island, and there's actually a little section in my book about the fondness I have for the memories of my dad taking me to Yankee Stadium where I used to wait for the ball players. So I'd like to, I'd like to see the Yankees You'd pull like it to see out the Yankees. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah. Oh. Mick, I am so sorry that happened. He'll be fine. Uh, well, the book, the book is called Have a Nice Day. It's a tale of blood and sweat socks. And you did not use a ghostwriter. You wrote this yourself. That's true, yeah. And I wanted to mention true. that. Uh, Mick, it was so great having you on the show. Thank come you on very back much. Come I would love to come back. We'll be right back with Jim